What's up, y'all? Shuffle. In today's video is going to be a first impression of Rogue Lords. I played it for a few hours, but I'm not going to make it the one hour gameplay thing alongside it. So I'm just trying something different. Let me know what you think about that. But anyway, we're going to talk about what I like and what I don't like in the game after I played it for about six hours at this point. So kind of a so kind of a lengthy amount of time for a first impression. The things I do like in the game is that it is voice acted. So the events, it has a narrator. The characters, or the disciples as they're called in this, all have voice acting, which is really good. I like when a studio is able to get voice talent for games just because it really does show an amount of effort and willingness to spend money to, you know, get proper voice acting and stuff, which is difficult. So I definitely appreciate that it's in the game and I do like it. The second thing I like is the art style of the game. I think it kind of fits. It feels a little more cartoony for the otherwise potentially serious denotation of the devil being a part of this. So it's kind of a nice spin on an otherwise very serious and sinister type of entity. I like that the game feels familiar. So I played a lot of roguelikes and turn-based games, especially in recent years. People know me for Darkest Dungeon and stuff. So this game, if you've played those types of games in the genre, you'll have Rogue Lords feeling very familiar once you pick it up. Like it has its own mechanics and merits that I'm gonna talk about here in a sec, but once you kind of incorporate those into your understanding, the game itself will feel very familiar. Speaking of those mechanics, I really like the Devil's Influence and the Terror mechanics for the game. They're pretty defining compared to other things that it has. The game has like the Slay the Spire type of map, which, you know, that's a topic for another video comparing games to STS, which is an amazing game. So it's understandable that things or other games try and borrow from it. So if you have the map feeling familiar and some of the gameplay elements can feel familiar, that means that we have things like the Devil's Influence and Terror, which separate it from its peers, I guess is the best word to describe it. The influence is really fun because it's just straight up cheating. The game kind of refers to it as such. And that's specifically what you're doing, which makes sense that Satan can just influence things at that scale. And since it uses the resource called Essence, it really has the player, between this and Terror, the player really has to think about either the short-term benefits or the long-term gains. Like, you really have to consider if spending, you know, the 10 Essence or the 15 or the 25 or whatever it is, if spending that amount of essence right now, at this moment, is going to be worth it when there's, you know, an elite battle coming up in two nodes. Terror is pretty cool because it's another thing in that vein of being a risk-reward type of system or short-term versus long-term, I guess is a better way to describe it. So with Terror, you can just sacrifice what you're doing immediately instead of getting skills or souls or something for a battle. You can say in two, three, or four nodes or whatever it is, I'm going to give myself a potential benefit depending on where I'm going, and that can really influence your pathing. I think if you are a mechanics heavy type of player like I am, I like to play games for their mechanics, I think this really does give it its own merits and its own legs to stand on. So if you are kind of hesitant and you think it might be too much like other games and you're enjoying the gameplay watching it from you know a video like this or someone's stream, then that might be the defining factor for you. My last point in the good section is that the game is pretty challenging, all things considered. I was playing on normal, which I think there's only two difficulties, at least for me right now. There's like apprentice and normal. So I played on normal and I've been sufficiently challenged. Like I've been having to learn the mechanics, obviously, and what the enemies are capable of. But even in the midst of that, I've really enjoyed having to weigh, you know, as I was saying before, the short term and long term investments and choices versus the immediate ones, and the battles feel pretty tough. So I've really been enjoying that. For the bad stuff, because you know everything has its flaws, and these aren't like bad as in the game is just straight up unplayable or something like that, but these are just things I noticed where it'd be nice if you know there's a little more work in it or whatever. It's really hard to give criticism you know, without sounding like a jerk, so I hope I'm not, but with the stuff I didn't like in the game is that the in-combat dialogue and some of the art can feel a bit repetitive. I guess the event dialogue too. The disciples have only a few lines that they say over and over outside of, you know, Satan who narrates everything. So that's kind of exempt from this criticism. So the in combat stuff, events, all those lines kind of come up repeatedly, even in your first like hour. So you get pretty accustomed to hearing them and then probably worn out at some point. And some of the events use the same sprites for, maybe not sprites is the right word, but like the same, uh, just art for the characters for like different things. 
My second point of contention for the game is I wish the music kind of hit me in the face. A lot of games can be carried by their soundtracks, which is, you know, great. We all love music. And the music in the game isn't bad. I'm not saying that. It's very ambient. It's very atmospheric, which is good. It fits what it's trying to do. So I don't really have an issue with how it's done, but it's more just personally like games where the music is kind of there as a driving force and it hits me in the face and it knows that it's really impacting the situation. My final point on the negatives list is that progression feels a bit slow. I played for about five and a half, six hours or whatever at this point, and the game has given me only four characters, and I really feel like I'm kind of struggling to unlock more stuff, and it kind of gets boring in a way to play with the same characters every single run. I'd like to be able to play with new ones, and I understand that you can mix and match them and build them differently, so that is a saving grace for this thing, but I really just want to play different characters, and it takes a little bit to get them. Unless, of course, I'm doing something wrong, which I might be. To wrap it up, I might seem a little biased in one way or another to you, the listener, just because I do play a lot of roguelikes these days, especially turn-based tactical ones, so if I seem a certain way to you or I compare it in a way you probably don't agree with, that's probably the reason why. With that said, I really do enjoy the game. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Maybe I'll do a review or some other types of content like starter guides or whatever in the future. We'll see what the weeks bring us. Maybe I'll stream it as well. But yeah, I really do like the game. So if you are a fan of the genre and maybe see the game on sale, it's probably worth considering. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Check out the description box for the cool links like Patreon and Discord and Twitch. And as I said, we'll probably revisit this game at some point in our lives. Who knows when that is, though? As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.